yes it's me again hello um i thought in this video i would talk about things in the uk that have changed and also my recommendations for netflix if you've got it um so or even just programs to watch um so if you don't live in the uk i don't know how much they really tell you around the world because um in my last video i said my cousin lives in singapore and I hadn't realised, I thought it was very strict, which it was, but they seem to relax the laws a little bit, and only recently have they banned going out in public and meeting up with people and that kind of thing, and even public places were still open, like swimming pools, so I was really shocked to find out that. And in the UK, we're seeing a lot about Donald Trump and what an idiot he is about everything, and how he's denying that they should have taken action sooner and he's saying they shouldn't and blah 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 so there's all that but in the uk it's a weird one because i saw a video this morning of this guy that lives where i live and he was like showing his youtube channel what it's like out there in the day and the night in town and it's a really odd situation for me and anyone else who's doing the 12 week complete isolation the only place i'm going outside is the garden I've not been out the front door at all, um, which is so weird. Um, and it's everywhere. It's just like a ghost town, like it's a zombie movie. And the thing is, after 12 weeks, if they release the lockdown, we were on another three-week lockdown, by the way, and today is the 13th of April. I oh, know, it's the 14th of April. I don't know what day, date, anything is at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so basically... By the time the lockdown's finished and I can come out of isolation, if everything's gone back to normal, I will not have witnessed any of this weird, like, everything's shut, every, there's no one around kind of thing. Because my husband's obviously going to work and seeing that the streets are empty, the car parks are empty, everything's empty. Um, but in the UK, basically everything except the supermarkets are closed and um, some GP surgeries are open for emergencies only or... You have to like phone speak to the doctor on the phone to see if you actually need to see a doctor or if they can do something over the phone and pharmacies are obviously open as well um but our supermarket markets are very restricted um it's not it doesn't seem as bad as it was at the beginning the panic buying and that kind of thing um but there's like um people patrolling to stop people flouting the rules um there's stickers all over the supermarkets to tell you how far to stand between people um you some places are limiting how much you can buy of each product um a lot of places are sold out permanently of particular things um it's just really odd um, my brother-in-law works in a supermarket and said it's just so odd they're only allowed 150 people in the store at any one time so everything is super super quiet um pubs are shut theatres are shut cinemas are shut restaurants um public places leisure places um did i say pubs um all events have been cancelled like sporting events theatres in london are closed um hotels are open but in the uk a lot of um hotels have been opened up uh, for homeless people um, and for key workers who can't live with their families and the government I think are paying for those people which is amazing um, so well there is a lot of crazy bad stuff and obviously also on TV there's like nothing because they've stopped filming for all our soaps uh, EastEnders, Coronation Street, even Neighbours in Australia so we only get Neighbours twice a week which I know is a third world problem, but it's weird, and, and the other soaps are the same. And so once all this is, you know, going back to normal, we're going to have a long period of time where there's just nothing around or on, because everything's stopped, like all sporting events have stopped. There's no Wimbledon this year, there's no Olympics, there's no um, Glastonbury, there's no... Well, all the big events, basically. But the good things to come out of it are that um, people are showing their kindness and it's something you rarely see now, these days. 
Um, complete strangers are being kind. People are giving up their time for free to help people, either with shopping, prescriptions, donations. Obviously, coming out to clap for the NHS brings the communities together. Um, like celebrities are giving money to charities. Um, it's just crazy. And then the environment has completely, it's like almost like a clean slate. Although it's a bad thing for the human race, it's also a good thing for the environment because we were having mega problems before all this happened. And now they're saying, you know, rivers are cleaner, cities are less polluted, um, wildlife is repopulating, um, nature is, yeah, it's just all these good things happening too. Um, and it's more like, just, it's insane. It's an insane time to live in. I can't believe I'm living through it because I always, when I used to learn history at school and we talked about like World War II or World War One, I, I just thought it's something I can't even imagine going through. And although I can't compare this to that, um, it's a glimpse of what it is like to have everything shut down and not see your families. That's the hardest thing for me, especially as my mum turned 70 in a couple of weeks and we had lots planned, but all of it's been canceled or postponed. Um, so it's weird, but anyway. Um, so as I say, I've been watching lots of Netflix to keep me occupied. Some things I had on my list for a while, some things people have recommended. Um, I don't know what kind of things you're into, but um, film wise, I, I'm planning on watching Lady Bird today. That's on there. That's good, apparently. Um, the Invention of Lying is really good and very funny. Um, it's got Ricky Gervais and it's a bit like Liar Liar, but the opposite. So if you've seen that, you'll know. Uh, films I don't have a very good attention span for, so um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, docuseries, obviously watch Tiger King. I think everyone in the the world has watched it um and i'm looking forward to this secret episode that's supposed to be coming out today um it's an insane thing i i just i don't even know what to make of it but i just think that it's insane <laughs> basically that's it um but it's good and um i watch a lot of crime docuseries so i've just watched um, I think it's called The Rachel Story. It's about a woman who's white who pretended she was black and she struggled with her identity and it's very controversial. I watched uh, Strong Island, I think it's called, um, about, again, a lot of stuff is about race actually at the moment on there, um, about this guy who was killed and they're trying to find out why and it's all that. And I've watched Who Killed Malcolm X and I knew in history who he was but I didn't really know much about him so that was very interesting um who killed little Gregory that's a French one so it's subtitled the whole thing but it's good um then I've been watching the cold case files obviously because so many to watch um I watched I started watching money heist I was recommended it but I really couldn't get into it and the dubbing is awful because it's in Spanish but it's dubbed in English and I much prefer it just to be in Spanish but have English subtitles. Um, I don't really get that at all. Um, the Keepers I started watching, I got halfway through and then gave up. <laughs> Killing Eve is back on BBC iPlayer, just as a quick side note. Um, it's only out every Monday but the first episode is very good. So if you like Killing Eve, that's out. Um, I have got Amazon Prime too, but I've not watched a lot of that actually, um, because there's so much good stuff on Netflix. Um, I also watched Afterlife, that's another British thing with Richie, Ricky Gervais. Um, the second season actually comes out in a few weeks, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, it's a little bit sad, but it's ironically funny, so, um, and I'm not a fan of Ricky Gervais at all. I don't like his humour, but it's actually very good. Obviously, I think most people by now will have watched You. You is very good. Um, I watched the first season when it came out two years ago, I think it was. So I already knew if I liked what it was, and that's very good. As is a British drama called The Stranger. That is, I know everyone's watched that. Um, but I watched the predecessor of that called Safe, which is written by the same person. 
and that's equally as good and very gripping it's one of those things that you have to binge watch in a day because you just want to know what happens um i have watched how to fix a drug scandal i think i watched that oh pitch perfect three we watched um it was actually not that bad we didn't see it when it came out in the cinema that's why we watched it but um and i watched the caliph browder story um that was really interesting again about american black young americans getting involved in stuff or getting accused of stuff they didn't do um it's just really sad um lock and key is another really good one good if you like if you've ever seen the house with a crook in its walls which is a film with jack black it's a bit similar but much darker um good and i'm not okay with this is one that i wasn't sure i'd like very good again watch that um the ones i have watched years ago um which i can recommend the staircase is a very popular one it's a crime docuseries again very dark very gruesome so if you're not a fan of gore don't watch that uh, um what else evil genius that's very good um again very insane um um, three identical strangers i watched this years ago i don't know why it's trending now but it's very good it's about three um triplets who were split up at birth and adopted out to each completely separate families and it's the story of how they met up and their backgrounds and stuff it's very very good very interesting um i watch a lot of um stuff that i download on catch up from sky crime um if you've got sky which i think it's just a uk thing isn't it i'm not sure if you get sky in america anyway um on that i'd be i literally have worked my way through almost everything on there <laughs> i've watched the smiley face killers i've watched all of the ones that are about specific people um and i'm watching at the moment snapped which is a single episode looks like an hour talks about these insane homicides and stuff um i like that kind of stuff and i think now if i'd have been able to work i would have loved to have been a forensic detective that's just to me seems interesting and trying to figure out like a lot of these programs are like x fbi x um DAs I think they're called, district attorneys, um, and ex like police force people who go back and look at cold cases because now you've got DNA and you've got people who've got time to do that and some of them they solve and some they don't but it's just really interesting so um, that's mostly what I watch. Um, I am not really into sci-fi at all, I'm not into kind of these like Pandemic seemed to be a really, really um, popular one on Netflix, but it seems wrong to watch it considering we're in a pandemic. And I don't know. But if you recommend it, tell me in the comment below. Um, and let me know your Netflix recommendations if I haven't already mentioned it. Um, and I hope that you're all staying safe. And let me know what it's like where you live. Um, and I'd be interested to know. And I shall speak to you all soon. Bye.